now we focus for a while on cities as the centre of democracy. And to get us started in thinking about that, I'm delighted to welcome Daniel Orquijo, who's from KCL in London. And he is part of the international youth think tank. And he's going to talk to us about um, community assemblies. Thank you very much, Adam. That was so nice. We want to empower the, a socially sustainable city of the future. And we can do this through community assemblies. When we think about the city of the future, we often want to picture a vibrant, diverse, and prosperous community. However, to get there, we must first overcome a number of interconnected challenges with the help of city planning. Now, most of you might know that city planning decisions often end up in the hands of, sit of managers, engineers, and business interests. This will not do if we are to achieve a truly socially sustainable future. A socially sustainable city must address these challenges in a way that is responsive to the local community. Community assemblies are the perfect participatory tool to do this, as it can include and institutionalize the voice of the local community in the city planning process. In the method that we designed, 24 participants are selected through stratified random sampling to be representative of the local communities. Their objective is threefold. First, community assemblies open up a new way for citizens to engage in democracy beyond the ballot. Second, by facilitating a diverse environment for deliberation, Participants get to focus on solving issues through specific policies rather than engaging in broad party politics. Third, group thinking with participants of diverse backgrounds will inevitably lead to better decisions, which means better policies that are more responsive to the local community. With this in mind, we designed a four-stage, four-phases community assembly. First, Participants will receive training on critical thinking and the legislative system so that no idea gets left behind due to lack of knowledge, confidence, or whatever. Second, an initial deliberation takes place. Here, participants come together, brainstorm, and develop proposals to be put forward. Then they select which ones require more attention and proceed to the next phase. In the next phase, the participants, with the support of the local authority and the media, reach out to the public about their proposals and gather signatures. Once a certain threshold is achieved, this, this proposal is taken up by the civil servants, who will then scrutinize it, improve it, and adapt it to the actionable legislative language. Finally, they, there is another gathering where participants get together to revise the, cha the changes made by the civil service and propose a final text to the local authority. Then, importantly, the local authority will have to hold a vote on this final proposal. Yeah. Uh, then, this might seem a very complicated um, system, very far-fetched, maybe, but in fact, Promoting citizen participation can be very simple and inexpensive. In fact, one way in which this can be done, a form of participatory integration, was through our Open Chair Democracy Talks, which we held yesterday in Gothenburg. This form of talks can be very, very valuable to things like, such as a community assembly. And we would like to invite you all to come and join us in our open chair democracy, which we will hold outside during the break. What we have presented today was based on a policy brief which we developed, six or eight uh, youth fellows from the think tank, and a, it's informed by a research paper written by John Guybe. Thank you very much. <laughs>